because they tell us that there was an eclipse. It says this, Jesus was placed on the cross at 9 a.m. This is Mark 15, 25. And then from noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over the whole land. So at the crucifixion of Christ, there was an eclipse. Um, let me read to you Luke 23, 44. It says, it was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three because the sun's light failed, according to Luke. In other words, Luke tells us that during the crucifixion of Christ, there was a solar eclipse. And I'm taking you somewhere because you're going to see the following earthquake and what's going to happen. And that way you are prepared because the way that earthquake is going to affect us as believers will be different to the way that it will affect so many others. The New American Translation Bible says this, they, because of an eclipse in the sun. In other words, because of an eclipse in the sun, total darkness covered the earth. And so you get to compare now the New Testament to the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, darkness took place. Then it was the sacrifice of the Passover, then liberation came. Compare the same to the New Testament. Darkness came, God sacrificed, which is the Passover lamb, Jesus, and then the resurrection came. But even before resurrection, you get to see something so significant. And the Bible tells us, that even after that, there was an earthquake. And so I want you to get ready because there's going to be an increase on in earthquakes. You will see famines. You will see plagues. You will see the plagues of Egypt being played out. Even last live, we were speaking about those insects or those flies, um, that the cicadas that are going to become covering different states. I think it's about 17 states. So that is a plague. But this is good. But but again, it is not to scare you. It is to get you ready because I'm taking you somewhere with this. So you get to see that in the Old Testament. There was the plague of darkness and straight after it, it was passed over. We have had that today. We have had that darkness. And so we even celebrated Passover. Well, we as Christians, we celebrated that last week. Jewish people celebrate Passover on April 22nd. And so after that, you want to get ready because of what is coming, which I will explain to you and so you get to see that then comes an earthquake well where is that in the bible matthew 27 51 at the crucifixion after jesus died so darkness came god sacrificed the passover lamb which is jesus and guess what it was followed by an earthquake. And so Matthew 27, 51, it says the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And so many people could be like, Yvonne, are you dooms and glooms? No, I'm taking you somewhere prophetic that will encourage you. Thank you, Vanessa wrote it down for me. Matthew 25, 51. What actually happened is that after the Passover lamb, who is Jesus, was sacrificed, what actually happened, that there was an earthquake. And then it says to the level that the rocks were split. Now that's a big earthquake. And so I was seeing that there's going to be a lot of earthquakes to the level that I saw many bridges collapsing. I saw that food supplies was going to be a problem in some places because the bridges that are connecting different states, 
they could be in danger because the rocks are about to split. And you will get to see this. And you're saying, Yvonne, is this judgment? There's going to be judgment over the wicked. But let me tell you that there is a distinction and a divine protection over God's people. And so the Lord began to show me that that happened again in the Old Testament. And guess what? When Moses went up, it says that when Moses went up to get the law from the Lord, the mountain shook violently. So when God was giving the commandments to Moses, what actually happened was that shaking. So the shaking is happening, has already started, but you will begin to see it intensify. Will we see wars? Yes. Will we see plagues? Yes. Well, there's already even pandemics. We're already talking about, the, you know, they're already talking about the flu pandemic and the flu virus and all of that. So Hebrews 12, 26, and I'm taking you somewhere. It says, when God spoke, from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. So when you get to see those earthquakes, when you get to see the shaking that is coming after the solar eclipse, it is the voice of God speaking. And the voice of God will be speaking loud and clear. God uses the sun to speak to the nations but God uses the moon to speak to his people. And the reason why God does that is because there was a time when many people used to worship the sun. And so now it was a sign God would speak through the moon. And especially if those phenomena take place around Jewish holidays, you really want to be paying attention because something is happening. And the worst thing is for you to be surprised. So what is what are we coming into? We're coming into a great shaking. We're coming into a time where the voice of the Lord will be speaking even to the level that you will see rocks splitting. And so it says this in the book of Hebrews 12, 26. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens. Get ready to see the heavens being shaken. Did you know that during the time when the solar eclipse was taking place, there was a comet and they called it the Devil's Comet. It is as big as Mount Everest and it pretty much went in another direction. And they called it that because it has two horns and it's greenish and it was just releasing gases. So they called it that. And so you get to see that we are living in the end days and we are seeing weird, strange signs in the air. Now, so many people who are not acquainted with what I'm talking about, they'll put on out their glasses, they'll go out, they'll, oh, wow, look at the eclipse, but then they will forget it. And so when those things happen, it will take them by surprise. That will be, oh my goodness, how do we, because they are not prepared, but you as God's people, you will be prepared. And so it says, once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed so that only what is unshakable will remain. I want you to hear me in the spirit. We're coming into a time where the shaking should not at all scare the church because what is unshakable will remain. What is from the Lord will remain. And the shaking is meant to bring the deepest revival the church has ever seen. It's meant to bring notable signs and miracles where you will see masses coming to the Lord. And it's going to take us by surprise because the Lord began to tell me, Yvonne, my church is not ready for the harvest. Today, 
If a billion souls get saved and they even go and look for churches, we're not even ready. We don't even have the resources. We're not even. And so we need to get ready because the harvest is coming in. So the great shaking that will be signs in the sea. There will be earthquakes. So many people will freak out. That is not for you. As the bride of Christ, you need to be ready in season and out of season. You need to give an answer because of the hope that is within you. And the Lord was telling me, Yvonne, there's going to be a revival among young people. Young men and young women are coming to the Lord. So if you are or you have been praying for your children, I want you to rejoice because God is doing a new thing among young people. And so this is actually not a freaky message, but it's taking you somewhere. So we're coming into an earthquake and not just one, there's going to be so many. And the one that I'm pointing to or the one that I was reminded of today in prayer was the earthquake that took place just after Jesus died. Well, I want to read it to you because it is so amazing. Matthew 27, 51 to 53. I want you to write those verses down because they are amazing. And as, I, as this encourages you, when I talk about earthquakes in the believer's life, they will have a prophetic meaning. So here it comes. It says, at the moment, this is the moment of when Jesus died, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. So the first thing is that that tearing took place because this way you can come and enter into the presence of God. As the book of Hebrews says, it says that you can come boldly into the throne room of grace, right? And then it says the earth shook. That is the earthquake that I'm talking about. Rocks split apart. And here it comes. Tombs opened. And the Lord said to me, pause. Did you know that the tombs of many will open? And I was like, Lord, what does that mean? When that earthquake hit the graveyard of many who died, they resurrected. And I'm speaking to you prophetically right now because it's going to be a surprise to so many people. When God is telling you tonight is a night where you need to decide that you are stepping out of your tomb. If you feel that you are in a time of death, you just feel nothing is happening in my life. I want to know who you are because we need to pray. But during that, you get to see there was a solar eclipse. Then the Passover lamb Jesus was sacrificed. Then the earthquake took place. But the earthquake actually brought people out of their tomb. And I hope you are hearing me in the spirit. Because the shaking that is coming, it is to cause you to step out of your tomb. And I can see Heather says, I'm stepping out of the tomb. Thank you. Elise says, yes, that's me. Chantel says, that's me. Hallelujah. And I can tell you this morning that this past, this eclipse, many believers, get ready, are stepping out of the tomb. They are stepping into life. They are stepping into the new season that God has for them. So you get to see God's timeline. Here it comes. There was a total solar eclipse at the death of Jesus. Then Jesus, the Passover lamb, was sacrificed. Then the earthquake took place. When the earthquake took place, people stepped out of 
their tomb. The tombs were opened. And I want to speak to you prophetically tonight. If you feel that your calling was in a time, if you even feel, Yvonne, I just feel that I'm dead. I just feel that my calling, it, 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 it died. I feel that the prophetic words that were spoken over my life, they died. Well, I am telling you tonight, there is a portal for tombs to be open for the resurrection of Jesus to come into your life and get you out. I love Romans 8, 11. It says, and the spirit that brought Jesus from the dead lives in you and it will give life to your mortal bodies. There is life being released as you are watching this life. And no wonder why there was such a great fight over this life. I've never had issues like tonight, even connecting to your life, because I knew in my spirit that the enemy did not want you to hear this. It says the bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. I read this this morning and life it just went out it was like wow so you get to see a total solar eclipse and then you get to see the passover and then you get to see the earthquake what happened was tombs were open and the bodies of many men and women who had died they were raised from the dead tina my sister i can see your tears and the Lord can too. And I prophesy to you tonight that you are stepping out. You are coming out because the shaking that is coming is not intended to destroy God's people. It is meant to come and say, shake every demonic spirit of death that has come over you. Shake off every demonic spirit of discouragement that took a hold of you. Take, shake off every negative word. It is a night of resurrection. After that eclipse, when Jesus died, after he gave up and was sacrificed as the Passover lamb for you, the earth brought that shaking and many people came back to life the tombs were open and many stepped out and I prophesy to you right now that the life of Jesus that lives in you will give life to your mortal bodies yes Amy I can see you're saying generational curses father in Jesus name I break off every generational curse and I separate you from all those previous generations even bloodline curses curses in the bloodline that have been passed down we want to break them in the name of Jesus the shaking that's coming is meant to get you out of your tomb you're meant to step out of that tomb and it's the time of life and then it says those people i love that this is matthew 20 27 verses 53 it says they left the cemetery after jesus's resurrection went into the holy city and appeared before many people that is so prophetic those people who were dead the earthquake that happened caused them to come to life they stepped out of the tomb and they left the cemetery this is very prophetic the lord is telling you tonight leave the cemetery leave the place of death Leave the place where you see others around you are dead and you are still wanting to be there. Tonight is a night where you say, I am shaking it all off. And the earthquake, it's like the Lord is shaking me. The Lord's bringing me back to life. The Lord is resurrecting me. And I always say that I love the power of the resurrection. Resurrection is more powerful than life. If you are alive, you could die. 
But if you resurrected, you have bypassed death. And so death cannot rule over you. So if you have been lied to, if you just feel, Yvonne, I am just in a place of death. I even hear someone saying, I'm emotionally dead. Yvonne, I've been wounded. I've gone through so much. It's almost like I have no feelings towards God. I have no feelings towards anyone else. Tonight is your night of resurrection. Because when the, when I talk about an earthquake, I'm not just talking about a physical one. Will there be physical ones? Yes, absolutely. Will they intensify? Yes, not just that. Will there be more solar eclipses? Yes, 2027 is the next solar eclipse and guess where it's coming you will be shocked it's coming over egypt guys it is coming over luxor in egypt and it's amazing because god is dealing with all the gods of egypt and when i talk about gods i'm speaking about all those evil demonic spirit that penetrated the USA, they penetrated Egypt, they penetrated Australia, God is dealing with them. So when I found out that the next solar eclipse is 2027 and it's taking place over Egypt, it's almost like God is going to the root. God is going to where those demonic gods even came from. And this is going to be the next judgment over there. But as for us right now, there is no judgment over you. I want to state that. The Bible says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Stop condemning yourself. Stop beating yourself. Stop listening to those people who are telling you God's angry with America. Watch God destroy America. I don't believe any of that. I believe that America is blessed. I believe that God's going to bless America. Will God remove evil government? Yes, absolutely. But God is going above and beyond to bless you, to bless the land and to restore the kingdom. That is what we believe and that is what we stand for. So when I talk about earthquakes, I am talking about us as believers, that the earthquake is not a bad one. It is coming to open the tomb. It is open. It is coming to shake us and it is coming to cause us. Yes, someone says we need to repent. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm speaking to the remnant. I'm speaking to those people who need to get their life right with God. I'm speaking to those people who are like Yvonne. I am the bride of Christ. I have been faithfully following the Lord. I want you to get ready because there's going to come those earthquakes. And when you see them hit different parts of the land, they'll be physical. You will see them. I don't want you to freak out. You know that God is making a distinction between you as his people and between everyone else. I shared this a couple of lives ago where in 2017, there was one solar eclipse over the USA that went diagonal. Then today's one went diagonal on the opposite way. And when you calculate the difference in days, it was 2000. 422 days between the two of them. And when you look up this particular verse in Strong's Concordances, it is actually Exodus 119. And it actually talks about, I love this verse, we shared that before, the midwives answered Pharaoh. Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. So you get to see that God is making a distinction. And when you understand what they were saying, once again, Pharaoh wanted to kill the babies. But those midwives saved the babies' lives. And so even in here, they are prophesying over God's people. And they're saying to him, those Hebrew women, in other words, God's people are vigorous and they give birth and they know how to protect who they give birth to. So you need to understand, yes, whilst we need to repent, but let me tell you that there's going to be glory release because 
we're coming into Pentecost. 40 days from now, there's going to be a new, fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And many young people, I saw many, many, many young people being baptized. I saw a coast. It was almost like a beach and it was filled with young people. And the Lord said to me, did you think Asbury revival was something? Watch and see what I'm going to do. There's going to be a major, major revival. So when you get to hear of earthquakes, and we, we've already had many, we've had Taiwan, we've had Japan, but many are coming. What do you remember? You're like, Lord, when you died on the cross, after the plague of darkness came, what actually happened was the earthquake brought life to those who were buried in their tombs. And so I want to begin to pray for you. If you just feel that you are right now going in a season of, of hardship, if you just feel, Yvonne, I'm choked. I just feel that I can't even breathe. I just feel that I am I need I I need help. This is the night to say, Lord, here I am. Let the power of your resurrection bring life to me. Take me out of the tomb because I don't even know how to do that for myself. So I want to pray for you. Even when you see those different plagues come you need to understand that there's going to be a release of the Goshen anointing. And this is going to be very evident. Even right now, tonight is the time of Lord, I'm receiving that anointing of somehow you will work things all together for me. You know, it was a couple of days ago, actually it was yesterday, that I reshared a memory on my Facebook Five years ago, things were just out of place. And I just felt that this whole world was just against me. Things were just going terrible. I didn't know what to make of it. And I thought, rather than blaming God, I'm going to write this post. And this is what I wrote. I wrote, everything that I'm going through is under the authority of Christ. And he will make all things work together for my good. I wrote that five years ago. Well, five years go by and I get this as a memory. And I look at it and I weep. And the Lord reminds me, do you remember that time when you just felt dead? When you just felt this whole world was coming against you? You still believed that even in the midst of chaos, that everything you went through was under the authority of Christ. And because of that belief, I made sure that all things worked in your favor. I prophesy to you right now that whatever you are going through is under the authority of Christ and that he will work all things in your favor. But tonight is a different shift. Tonight, the Lord is shifting you out of the tomb, out of a place of death, out of a place of torment, and into a glorious light. Tonight's a shift where God says, I am doing something new. Christopher says, April is a month of birthing. Yes. It is a birthing of shaking. It is a birthing of new things. It is a birthing of promises. And what is birthing? When you think about it, it is again, when a seed dies in the ground, it has to go through death before it comes out. And tonight, as that solar eclipse has just passed, and as that darkness just passed, and you know we're coming into Passover, you know that there's going to be a shaking. The shaking is to bring life. You are stepping out of the tomb. I want to pray for you right now. Wherever you are, I want you just to lift up your hands to the Lord and let's pray together. Holy Spirit, come. Father, in Jesus' name, right now, 
I renounce death over your people. I want you to pray that with me. I want you to say, I renounce death. I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, I break every curse of sickness and disease. I break every curse of fear and discouragement. I break every demonic spirit of suicide. Father, in the name of Jesus, I separate myself from all of this. And I just say, here I am, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I release healing in bodies right now. I release healing. There's someone right now. You're getting healed. I saw the Lord touch your both eyes. And it's going to be like going, you're going to start feeling a little bit blurry. And then you will be able to see. I want to know who you are. There's someone else. Yes, in Jesus' name, I rebuke ringing in the ear in the name of Jesus. And I speak healing to you right now. Father, in Jesus' name. I lift up every single person who is sick in their bodies right now, and I just release healing. If you feel you want to get back with God, I want you to say, Lord, I want to come back to you. Lord, this is for me. God, you're shaking me. Everything that's happening is shaking me. And you're saying, get out of your tomb. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak a shift over your people right now. I speak a shift, God, in their ministry, in their jobs, in their children. And I hear the Lord saying, your son is coming back to me. Your daughter is coming back to me. This is a time of family unity. Whatever tried to come against you and came between you and your children, the Lord is restoring this right now. And I hear the Lord saying, I want to deliver my people from fear. If you are suffering with fear right now, I want you to just rebuke that spirit. Just shake it off. Rather than waiting for the shaking, I want you to say, Lord, I shake off fear. I shake off disappointment. I shake off discouragement. I shake off pain. And I just come into a place of unity. Father, I thank you for I am coming into all of that. Father, in Jesus' name, let tonight be a night of miracles. Let tonight be a night of healing as that eclipse went over the sky, as we saw your hand, as we saw what you're doing. Father, in the name of Jesus, let tonight be a different night of a shift. And all of God's people said, Amen and amen and amen. As we come to the end, I don't want you to stay with that giving to the Lord. This is the time where you say, Lord, this word was for me. And being in the month of April, the Lord is opening doors from the four corners of the earth. This is the time where all the doors are opening in your life at the same time. And I know that last life people saw it four, 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 because it was a declaration of that. But tonight, as the tombs, as you're coming out of the tomb, mark your seed. I want you to say tonight, in the name of Jesus, I'm coming out of my tomb. And the four doors are opening up for me. This is the time where my ministry is going to a new level. So this is going to be a seed of resurrection. Anything that resurrects has to die first. And if you feel this is where you are, I want to encourage you to say, Lord, you are opening up every door. This is, don't forget that this is the year of the open door. Yes, my great friend Love has a name, Brian. So good to see you connecting. He already wrote 444 with a smile. <laughs> Amen. So many people are sowing that because it is a prophetic night with an open portal of what God has just done in the skies today, that there's going to be a shift. And this is what I heard the Lord say, I'm firing all cylinders. 
This is going to be the time of the Lord saying, I am firing all cylinders. Every door will open to you. Not one door will be shut. It's going to be such an open door that you're going to think, God, how did you do it? So I want to pray for those four doors to open. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that tonight the four doors are opening, Lord, that you are firing all cylinders. Father, in Jesus' name, that those who are partnering with you, they are decreeing and declaring that they're stepping out of the tomb, that they're coming into a place of life where you are releasing the life of the Lord in their bodies. Father, I thank you for what is coming. Lord, I just speak revival over them right now. And all of God's people said, Amen. And amen. I pray. Yes, Vanessa says, I accept these four doors. Amen, my sister. You can go to the website, those who don't know how to do that. Um, and it is celebratefreedomministries.org. And there's different ways to give. I want to say thank you to all of you that are partnering with us in our ministry in Egypt. By God's grace, we've been helping so many widows because I'm not on my laptop. I'm just limited to what I can show you today. But last month, we were able to buy them all blankets, widows and their children and a lot of orphans. If the Lord put that on your heart and you want to join with us, we're going to be sending you my book, which is Revealing the Healer and a teaching series just to say thank you for what you're doing. If you have not got my new book that I just released, The Supernatural Love of Yeshua, through Middle Eastern eyes, please do. People are super blessed learning about Jesus through Middle Eastern eyes. I love you. Thank you for all of those comments. Please let me know what happened tonight. If you received a miracle in your body, if you received the healing, I would love to know about it. Connect with us Wednesday nights um, on um, discipleship. It's a free class. Anyone can join. And just be blessed, share this with everyone, and get ready to see what the Lord is about to do in your life. Have a blessed, blessed night. Bye-bye.